Which brings me to the topic of morning routines, because for me, when I'm having a struggle and it literally is hard to put one foot in front of the other, I always have my morning routine. It always gets my day going. I always feel better after I finish. And then I feel like I can take on the world because there's something in my day that I could depend on, that no one could take away from me. And I was giving it to myself. It was for me, right? So let's talk about morning routines and how that structure can help with stress and challenges and all that we're going through. Oh, such a good point. And quickly to piggyback also on something that you said, one experiment I've been trying the last year or so is I call it shortening the gratitude gap. Because as we talked about, when we have those difficult things in life, we eventually can look back and realize all the positive benefits that came from going through that struggle. And what I realized was if that has been true 100% of the time in my life, that the hardest things led to such beautiful things, and I eventually could find gratitude for them, what if I could shorten that gap with the goal of one day eventually finding gratitude even in the struggle, even before I know whatever good may come from it. Um, mm. Because I think gratitude also is such a beneficial nervous system state to be in, but also like it helps really undo some of those stress patterns. When we're in gratitude, we're not worrying, we're not anxious, we're not like in a anxiety, stress, or scarcity mindset. And so I try to just put little reminders of gratitude in my day for that reason, um, which actually built into the morning routine question as well. And I love that you do this as well. I would guess we maybe have some similarities in our morning routine and I would love to hear yours as well. Um, for me, I've finally gotten to a point where my sleep is more dialed in. And like you, I had some challenges with that at different times. So I naturally kind of wake up around sunrise or sometimes a little later, so sometimes seven, but usually never after seven. And then I have a few kind of concrete rules around my morning routine. One is sunshine before screen. So I love that you talked about morning sunlight as well. I think this is one of hands down the best free tools that we all have available to us is to, before we get into both the busyness of life that's connected to our technology and the artificial light that's connected to our technology, to go outside, ideally if possible, barefoot on the ground, you don't have to look directly at the sun, but just let the natural light hit your eyes. And the studies on this are so amazing of actually how this dramatically can impact your circadian rhythm, set you up for good sleep at night, sort of start the clock for when you're going to produce melatonin, help your cortisol rhythms, especially if you do that pre-caffeine in the morning, and even really benefit hormones. To the drastic side of this, the camping study showed that even just a week of camping without artificial light almost completely reversed any circadian rhythm related issues people had. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we're beings that are meant to interact with the light of our natural environment and our biology takes so many cues from that. So if you don't already do that, that's one easy change that doesn't cost anything that you might notice a, a drastic difference from. Um, in the same way, like if you can get a little bit of bright midday sunlight that reinforces the timing again, and then watching the sunset is a natural source of red light, which you know we buy all these fancy red light panels for, but the sun gives it to us every day for free if we just go outside for 10 minutes. Um, so I think that's one easy change. So that's one of my rules. Also, my rule is like hydration and protein before caffeine, because for moms, we talked about stress, there can actually be the biological component of cortisol being out of balance. It's very common, especially in moms, especially when we've had babies that kept us up all night. Mm -hmm. And adding caffeine to the system on an empty stomach before we've given our body light signaling, the body can read that as pretty intense stress. So I noticed a big change in how I felt in my mental bandwidth when I set that as a habit and made sure that as soon as I wake up, I have a quart sized jar of salt water with minerals in it on my nightstand. I drink that first, I go outside, I breathe, I'm present. Sometimes I go for a walk, but I do those things before I put any kind of stress around my system like caffeine or artificial light or looking at work emails or anything like that. There's also some cool data on that eating protein first, especially if we can get at least 30 grams pretty close to waking up. This is one negative I've seen with this trend of intermittent fasting. I think there's actually tremendous benefit to time restricted eating if you are in a non-stressed state. Yeah. But I think especially for women, we would benefit from doing that shifted earlier in the day versus later. Like I know it's easier to skip breakfast, especially if our cortisol is kind of out of whack, but that's a stress signal on the body. Whereas if we get protein first thing, nourish ourselves, get a lot of micronutrients, send our body all those safety signals. And then if anything, stop eating when the sun goes down, that's a way to get that time restricted window, but in a way that's circadian aligned. 
Um, so those are my non-negotiables in my morning routine. I will often also journal or do a gratitude practice, um, or I said sometimes go for a walk. Um, before I get on any technology. And then also if my kids are awake yet, I love to like check in with them and have time and be present before I shift into any work related time as well. Um, but like I said, I would love to hear anything on yours that I'm not already trying. Yeah. So me, I wake up, my dog wakes me up. So an alarm does not wake me up. It tends to be before the sun comes up around five, five thirty. I love the quiet before anyone else is awake. Um, because the sun hasn't come up yet, I lay down and I visualize my day. I visualize what I want for my children. I visualize just breathing and calming down. I will then have my coffee. Um, and I do agree with you on the protein. I, protein is my first meal. I, I don't do it as early as you do, which for what you're saying is a thousand percent correct. Um, fasting is a stressor and us moms are already stressed. And most of us are walking around with hypothyroidism. And I love the word that you use was safe. Does your body feel safe? Because if it doesn't feel safe, it doesn't know if it's being chased by a target tiger or gonna hit a famine for a year or if you're just upset about your child's um, fight at school, so your body doesn't know. So that safe feeling is going to help with the cortisol management. And as us moms are getting older and our ovaries are dying and our adrenals are taking over the sex hormone production, our adrenals are being tapped out even more. So it takes less to, to get us fatigued, to get us to that burned out stage. So you want to make sure you feel safe. So with that being said, if I'm overly stressed, I will make sure that I have something to eat earlier rather than later. Um, my morning though, I start out in my sauna. Once I hit, once the sun comes up, I will go outside for 10 minutes, turn on my sauna, and then I will actually go in the sauna before my workout. But at the end of my workout, I always end with a walk at 20 minutes with my dogs. It's in the sun. It's bringing down that cortisol that can actually be shot up a little bit from the workout just to calm my system down, making sure I'm hydrated just like you, not just with water, but with minerals, with, with salt. Um, and if you're having your coffee, put that salt in your coffee even or match it with the salt water ounce for ounce. That's really important. And people ask, am I allowed to drink coffee? That is something that you need to ask yourself. Are you needing three to four cups of coffee just to get by? Your adrenals are tapped. Time to quit the coffee for a little bit. Can you have just one cup of coffee and feel good for the rest of the day? Great. Have it. But make sure you're hydrating. Make sure you're taking in the minerals. Make sure you're taking in enough protein. I've done a lot of talking in my groups lately about um, protein intake. Us women, for some reason, are scared of protein. And there was just a study that came out that said, if you overeat protein, you're not going to gain fat, you're going to actually gain lean muscle. And that was even with people that weren't working out, which was incredible. That just shows you the power of protein. And it's just going to stabilize everything and make you feel more um, grounded. Um, as uh, when you are having to deal with kids going left and right and all of the all of the things. I will not go without a workout. Now, if I'm tired, then that workout is just the walk or it is yoga, but I'm putting on my workout clothes and that hour is for me and no one's going to take it away. And when I'm in the sauna, I'm also meditating, sweating things out, hydrating with electrolytes, of course, but I can be listening to a sermon, or I can be listening to a podcast for um, just learning, or I can just be meditating. So those two things are non-negotiables. And literally, I feel like I can be, you know, facing earthquakes and volcanoes if I get that morning routine in and I know that I have my time. So I love, I love what you're doing. And it, it's actually going to make me start incorporating some more of the things that you're doing as well.